Hello everybody, my name is Lady to you, and welcome back to Let's Play Earthbound. In the previous video, we arrived in Foresight and explored everything that we could possibly explore at that point. And today, we're returning to the Dusty Dunes Desert to go to the gold mine that we heard so much about in the previous episode. So, I'm gonna give you- I'm gonna, um, confess something real quick. I have been dreading recording this- recording this, uh, video. Because the gold mine is widely considered one of the most difficult parts of this entire game, but... There is something that I'd be that we'd be demonstrating over the course of this area, which will make this area so much easier. It is a glitch. I don't usually explode glitches all that often in my videos, but I think this glitch is very worth mentioning. Anyway, first enemy. This is the Thirsty Coil Snake. 270 HP, zero power points, 51 offense, 80 defense, one speed, five guts, 2,786 experience when you defeat them. 276 stars when you defeat them. Has an 8 128 chance of dropping a chick. Weaknesses 75% vulnerable to fire, 100% vulnerable to freeze, 50% flash, 99% paralysis, 10% brain stock, 50% paralysis. Attacks, biting attack, low level damage, bites with this poisonous fang, can cause poison, close around a target, and mobilizes a party member. My personal favorite strategy with this thing is to use Paula's PSI Freeze Alpha and then use Ness and Jeff's Bass Attack to defeat it because we're gonna need a lot of. Uh, Oh god, that was not- that was- uh, be, destroyed, be destroyed? Okay. <laughs> I got nervous right there. Um, my personal favorite strategy is to use the PSI Freeze Alpha on the Thirsty Coil Snake because if you do that, then the Bass Attack from Ness and Jeff will soon be enough to uh, destroy it completely. It probably will have a chance- one opportunity to attack, but um, it shouldn't be too terrible because, um, because we have like a lot of healing powers and stuff like that. One thing I'd like to say right now is that before you do anything else, I highly recommend you go back to uh, Tucson to go get some ketchup packets for our glitch that I'll be demonstrating in a moment. Yay, we defeat the Thirsty Coil Snake. And right- uh, Oh, Mad Duck! Okay, um, the Mad Duck is an enemy that we've seen before, and you may recall that in that episode, I said that you're going to want to watch out for the- um, uh, for the M Mad Duck later in the game. This is that point. It's not that bad to deal with right now because uh, it is very easy to defeat um, if you know what you're doing. But the thing about the Mad Duck is that it can take away your power points. And when we first fought it, Jeff, we only had Jeff and he's the only party member in the entire game who cannot use power points at all. Um, but now that now that we have Ness and Paula in the party, um, Ooh, for a sec, uh, no, I'm not gonna keep them. Now that we have Ness and Paula in the party, it's, they might be a bit more of a threat, but it's not that big of a deal. I am one of the masters of the Zul. There are five masters in Zul. We are mothers, of course. I believe I'm the third strongest among us. Take your best shot. Okay, this is the Guardian Digger. Obviously, you can tell that the sprite is a recolor of one of the bosses that we fought in the Sanctuary before. I don't remember the I don't remember the name of the top man right now, but anyway, this is the Guardian Digger, the boss of uh, the gold mine. 386 HP, 110 power points, 59 offense, 129 defense, 17 speed, 21 guts, uh, 17,301 experience. We defeat them. 1,467 dollars. We defeat them. We will drop no items. Has 75% vulnerable to fire, 75% vulnerable to freeze, 99% flash, 10% paralysis, 50% brain attack, 10% paralysis. Attacks, bass, low level damage, claws of the sharp nails, high level damage, tears into tears into you, high level damage, sealed beta, great physical sealed, life up alpha, recover 75 to 120. HP. Right off the bat, the Guardian Digger is going to have a PSI seal it up right, right off the bat. So what I highly recommend you do is the, to have Ness use PSI Flash on him, and then have uh, uh, Paula use uh, PSI Freeze bait, uh, Gamma on him, and uh, Jeff will spy on him. I highly recommend you wait to come in here until Paula is level 31, um, so that she has access to PSI Freeze Gamma. Otherwise, this boss fight's gonna be a pain. There's no denying that. Uh, because, I guess, as you can tell, he does an insane amount of damage against our characters. Hopefully we'll be able to defeat him soon. I think PSI Freeze Beta will be enough to take him out. Um, make sure you don't have your characters bass against him during the first couple turns because, like I said earlier, um, this guy has a, um, um, has a sealed up uh, at the beginning of the battle, so any attacks from a bass would be reflected back at you.
there's an IQ capsule inside. Okay, um, I'm pretty sure I've said this already, but if you find an IQ capsule, make sure you give it to Jeff, because uh, I don't really think any of the other party members can really benefit from having an high, high, a higher IQ, um, but uh, Jeff will, because uh, he, needs, uh, he needs a higher IQ to be able to uh, repair the stronger items in the game. Rude! I didn't even get a chance to escape, you jerk. Whoa! Okay, that was awesome! We beat it. We did a lot more damage to that than we usually do. Wow. I'm gonna have to keep that in there. I was gonna edit that battle out, but man, that was awesome! <laughs> Okie dokie, where do you, if you go, if you continue going right, you'll just go into a big circle, so let's continue on down here. One of the reasons why the gold mine is considered one of the more difficult parts of this game is because it's kind of like a labyrinth. Um, it's kind of like a maze-like area, so you need to be careful going through here because you can get lost very easily. There is an exit mouse you can obtain later in this place, so, so if you have already used the one that you found in Onnit. Again, we did a lot more damage than usual. Paula, you are awesome this time. Before I continue onward, I'm just gonna say for the record, while I was practicing for this area, there is a thirsty coil snake who spawned on top of this cliff right here. I'll have a picture of the Meaver's post I made um, talking about it, but this kind of like continued on with the trend that happened in the previous video where we had that one annoying reveller enemy spawn on the water. So yeah, that's, that was an exciting time. Ness opened the present. There's a big bottle rocket. Ness takes it. Save your big bottle rockets for now. If you, um, like I said earlier in the Let's Play, uh, you're gonna want to save the big bottle rockets for very special occasions. This is one of them because, well, not against the thirsty coil snake, but the guardian diggers later in the dungeon, a uh, cave thing. You're gonna want to use the big bottle rockets on those guys. So make sure you, if you've gotten them, make sure you save up um, them whenever you find them, because this is a very good uh, point in the game to use them on. There is a point later that we're going to be coming up, probably in the next episode, where we'll be able to buy big bottle rockets whenever we want. Um, okay, I, mean, I think I'm going to throw something away, because... Let's throw away the pop gun, we're not going to need that anymore. Let's seal up uh, Ness real quick, because that might be a good idea, and then we can use the PSI caramel that uh, Jeff has uh, to restore our, our PowerPoints. Something I learned recently is that they're not actually called PowerPoints uh, officially, they're called Psychic Points. Um, but I'm just gonna be- I'm just gonna keep referring it to PowerPoints because that's how- what I've been calling it, like, for years. <laughs> um, coming over here, we have a new enemy. This is the Gigantic Ant, easily the most difficult enemy you'll find in this area, aside from the Guardian Diggers. 388 HP, 181 power points, so 54 offense, 112 defense, 17 speed, 5 guts, 3980 experience, we defeat them, $304 when we defeat them. We'll drop, has a 428 chance of dropping a double burger. Weaknesses, 100% vulnerable fire, 100% vulnerable freeze, 50% flash, 50% paralysis, 10% brace lock, 50% paralysis attacks, PSI magnet alpha, absorbs power points, stings with its poison stinger, can cause poison, biting attack, low level damage, paralysis alpha, can cause paralysis, a flash with a menacing smile, no effect, calls for help, summons another gigantic end. Right off the bat, uh, what I, um, you definitely want to use PSI freeze on the, on the send beam. That's basically going to be the rule of the uh, gold mine where PSI Freeze is going to be your best friend uh, because, um, well, it's a really powerful attack and it consumes very little uh, power points and it's just awesome. Over here is where you can get an exit mouse. I still have mine from earlier, so we have no need to pick one up right now, but if you want to, go ahead. They're very useful because... Um, in case you guys didn't, in case you guys don't remember the exit mice, they can be used to leave a place um, immediately. So, if you don't have one, it's definitely a good idea to go pick one up. Okay, pretty soon I think I'm gonna uh, solve that glitch that I talked about earlier. Uh, the glitch I'm talking about um, refer refers to the magic truffle because, as I said earlier in the, because as I said earlier in the let's play. The magic truffles can be used to uh, restore your power points. They're easily the best item to use that for. Um, and something else that I 
should probably point out for the record is that we may, you may have noticed that we still have the hand aid even though we used it out a few videos back and there's only one to the game in the game as far as I know. Um, I don't remember if I said this before, but in between videos, a couple of videos back, I had a field recording. Um, like I forgot to save my game and uh, it wasn't a very good time. By the way, we have some new enemies right here. These are... this is a noose mine. 231 HP, 0 power points, 47 offense, 52 defense, 18 speed, 5 guts, 1,990 experience to defeat them, $220 to defeat them. Has a 16 and 128 chance of dropping a carton of cream. Weaknesses, 100% vulnerable fire, 50% phrase, 50% flask, 50% paralysis, 99% brain socks, 50% hypnosis. Attacks, a bass, low level damage, employs a binding attack, and mobilizes a party member. So, these are... Fairly difficult enemies if you don't know what you're doing. But if you have skills like me, then you're doomed. Except you're not, because these are very en easy enemies to defeat. And I think that was the last enemy that I have to make a bile for for the uh, for the gold mine. Yay! Okay, the, to start off the glitch that I'm going to be demonstrating, um, what you want to do is that you want to have the magic, is that you want to take the magic truffle and then give it to yourself um, so that it'll be arranged at the back of your inventory and then go into a battle and then after we get into the battle, oh, okay, we defeated all three of them at once. Yay! Okay, in all seriousness, I'm going to a battle to make this happen. I'm not entirely sure if this happens in the old world. I think you have to be in a battle for this to work. But what you want to do is that to make sure you're good, your magic truffles at the back of the inventory and then use it on yourself as long as you have ketchup packets with you. Because the ketchup packet will make the magic truffle stronger and as soon as the attacks are done... Come on... You can see that we still have the magic truffle. The ketchup packet is gone, but the magic truffle is still there. This is easily the best way to beat the gold mine um, if you want to exploit glitches and all. I think I'm only going to use this like one more time throughout the course of the gold mine because I don't want to um, abuse glitches all that much in this let's play because I because I want to because the way I like doing these games is that I like to play through them the way that you were intended to do it. Like, I will sew off shortcuts and glitches every now and then, like I'm doing now. Um, but I like to uh, sew off what, you're, what you were intended to do to complete the area. Uh, controller. Controller. Oh. Excuse me! I know I've been playing for a long time, but I don't need a reminder to take a break every now and then. If you guys thought 5 was annoying at Scour Sword for reminding you to take a break every now and then, you have not seen anything until you've played this game. <laughs> I'm really the third strongest master. I'll destroy you now. Aren't you a pleasant little person? Okie dokie. Same strategy as before. PSI Flash and PSI Freeze Gamma on this guy. Um... Does Jeff have anything, anything we can use on this thing? I guess we can use the HP Sucker. Probably won't work though, because I believe that only works on weaker enemies, but it's worth trying. It did not work. If you don't know what the HP Sucker does, that basically takes away... Um... Oh my god! Pana defeated in one attack! Pana, you're awesome! We only need to do one attack on that thing, and we defeated it! Okay, um, let's drop the silver bracelet, and then take the platinum band, and then have Ness equip it. Yay, we have a new- oh, that's actually kind of a gruesome, de a gruesome detail to have a skull right there. Wow. Yeah, you back away from me, you mad duck.
you know, at the rate we've been going with Paula being able to wipe out these really tough enemies with one attack, we probably don't even need the big bottle rocket to take out the Guardian Diggers. We could probably save them for later. Would you guardian ants please go away? Or gigantic ants, whatever you're supposed whatever you're called, go away. Alright, two down, three more to go. We are sort of halfway down with this place, like the worst is over, so we should be done by it. we should be done very quickly. Um it's kind of a gruesome detail, but one way you can check to see how close you are to a guardian digger is a two. Look at the bones around the place because if there's like a is there, if there's like a pile of bones near a like a hallway or a thing or a ladder, then that can tell you that that tells you that the guardian digger is nearby. But either way, I'm gonna go this way real quick because uh, well, I know there's another guardian digger right there. Let's see if we can have uh, Paula take it out with one more attack again, because that would be really awesome. M maybe she got more strength than usual, because when I was practicing for this area, like, it still took, like, two attacks to defeat this thing. Speaking of two attacks... <laughs> All right. uh, something you also may have noticed by now is that the uh, um, all the Guardian uh, Diggers will all claim that they're the third strongest... Um, uh, the 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 bah, the, the third strongest uh, um, boss in the area, and there's like a number three in the background. I always like that detail for some reason. I have no idea why. <laughs> okay, let's use the let's use the PSI camera. Um, I did not mean that to use that on this, but okay. I'm gonna use it on Paula, but I guess it works for this too because he has some pretty useful par uh, PSI abilities as well. Either way, next stop, let's go down this ladder, because there's probably stuff hidden on there, like a bunch of enemies, wow, okay, I don't want to fight that many. Uh, this is a very good area to level grind on enemies if you want to uh, level up a couple times, because, um, there are, because there are tough enemies here, yes, but they will reappear if you leave and come back later. And um, it's worth mentioning that after you defeat all the Guardian Diggers, all the enemies in this place will completely disappear. So you're kind of so if you don't fight these enemies now, then you're going to lose out on experience for some of the tougher enemies we're gonna be facing a little bit later. And now we want to go this way. I think there's a treasure chest somewhere around here. Yes, there is. I can see the future. Oh, there's a teddy bear. Okay, that's gonna be very helpful for this area. Even though we haven't been having that much trouble with this place, um, it's still gonna be very useful to have the teddy bear so that the enemies will attack it rather than the party members. All right, let's continue onward. I think there's another one of those enemies somewhere around here, hopefully. Yep, there are, is it on the right? No, it is not. Okay, let's get the treasure chest first. Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. Yeah, we got the calorie stick. Uh, all right, uh, calorie sticks. Uh, they're very useful uh, healing build. They, a, a very useful healing item. So uh, you definitely. So if you can find them, you definitely want to go pick those up because I think you're as I think they have like the same strength as the uh, what's it the hamburgers. I might be wrong about that. I'll put your caption on screen right now. Either way, let's. Um, Let's just defend against this thing. I was going to use the big bottle rockets to take out the last uh, two guardian diggers, um, but um, I think PS I think uh, Apollo's uh, strong enough to just take him out normally. Let's, no, don't, don't use bass, don't use bass, use defend. Uh, like I said earlier, if you try using a bass attack on these enemies, at least during the first couple turns of the battle, then, um, it's, then the attack is just going to reflect back at you, so you want to be careful with it. Let's see if one more uh, freeze alpha would take this out. Hopefully it will. And it does! Yay! I'm very surprised with how easily we'd be going through this area because I like I practiced for this area a couple times because I want to uh, re-familiarize myself with the layout of this place so I wouldn't get lost. 
Um, it needs time. I like struggled with this area, but like right now I'm like going through here very easily and I'm really happy right now. Okay, let's Oh we got the the chick became a chicken. Okay, that's something that I have completely forgotten to talk about. The chick you could buy them. Um, they'll eventually turn into a into a chicken. Um, I believe the chicken could be used to you could sell that. It's, it's one of those items where you can sell them and you get like a lot of money from it. Um, the chick itself, I believe, is used to, to uh, heal Nessa's homesickness. I might be wrong about that, so I'll put a caption on the screen to correct myself if I am wrong. Um, but uh, the chick, I, the if I if I remember correctly. The chicken is used. Uh, the chick is used. Uh, bam. The chick is used to cure homesickness, and the chicken can be used to sell to get a lot of money. I don't know why I had such a hard time trying to say that. Um, but either way, you're probably not going to need to sell the chicken anyway because like, you can just get a lot, a lot of money from fighting the enemies normally. And there's a secret herb right there. Definitely useful for fighting these enemies because a lot of these enemies can do poison damage. And the secret and the super handy dandy secret herb can help you with that. No, oh, the teddy bear became a pile of fluff. You monster! The teddy bear has been avenged. Ah, oh, fair me! And now we're on the last guardian digger. <laughs> you fought the strongest master of this hole, the second strongest master of this hole, the fourth strongest master of this hole, and the weakest master of this hole. I'm Julie, the third strongest master of this hole. Now you see the true advantage of being third. And because I said so, I'm going to be using the big bottle rocket to finish this guy off. If I had one. I could have sworn that I had one. Did, did somebody else pick it up? Where is the big bottle rock? I just want it. Okay, yes, uh, Ness has one for some reason. That was a very bad idea. I should have had those guys defend. Did I just waste that big bottle rocket because Ness can't use them? Okay, no, I didn't. That's good. Uh, okay, PSI class. Uh, defend. What goods do you have? Um, does does Paula have enough for PSI Freeze Gamma? No, she doesn't. Okay, uh, this is who's rocking. Sorry if I'm not talking all that much. Um, I'm kind of just more focused on just trying to think about what I need to do next. Let's use a defense spray on on Paula because he has a uh, weaker because he has lower HP right now. And of course you recover your HP. I, can I not give those items to each other during the thing? I guess I can't. Okay, another PSI rocket. I really want to use the big broader rocket technique against this thing, but I apparently can't right now. So let's just use a super bomb against this and have Jeff defend. I think uh, this attack will finish it off. It's kind of fitting that the last Guardian Digger is the one that we're having uh, the one we're having trouble with. Either way, we defeated them all. We defeated every single one of them, so now we've completed what is considered one of the harder parts of this game. We beat and beat and easily. Caught for joy! <laughs> Ness opened the present. There's a guts capsule inside. Paula takes it. The skull's name is Frederick. Either way, uh, we're gonna be going back over to Forsyth real quick. You can use the um, you can use the exit mouse to leave this place if you want. Um, but I th think I got everything in here. I think I got all the treasure chests. So you know what? I'm gonna use it. I don't feel like walking. Let's use the exit mouse. Yay! Speed running tactics.
Pictures taken instantaneously. I'm a photographic genius if I do say so myself. Okay, get ready for an instant memory. Look at the camera. Ready? Save us the pickles. Whoa, what a great photograph. It'll also bring back the fondest of memories. All right, now, before you do anything else, before you go to Foresight, you have to talk to this guy. You've gotten rid of the monster? Good job! Okay, from here on, just let me dig. you see, I'll find the buried gold. Before I start digging, I'm going to set a careful plan of action. All right. Um, if you hear that noise, I think that tells you that the uh, chicken is fully grown. Um, but either way, you have to talk to that guy, and I think you have to stay the night. I'm at the hotel before anything will actually happen. Uh, so, in the next video, we'll sell the chicken to see just how much we get from it. But either way, you can, uh, you can go back and after you defeat all the guardian diggers and all the enemies disappear, you can go back and get all the treasure chests. It's just like a sanctuary, except it's not a sanctuary. <laughs> so, it a lot um, similar to the belch base that we saw in Southern Valley. Um, it's kind of, it's kind of like that. Um, and if you want to talk about like in Zelda terms, I guess it could also be like a mini dungeon from the Zelda series or anything or something like that. Ness, greetings! I'm George Gerardo Montecadbeau's brother. Gerardo's my name, but he hasn't found any buried treasure yet. We did, however, find a diamond instead. Ger Gerardo told me to give it to Ness. Here it is, please take it. And we got the thing! Well, I've got to go. I'm busy working out the other mind. Busy, busy, busy. So, with that, we're gonna this video off here, so thank you guys so much for watching this video of Earthbound. Next time, we'll be returning to Foresight to see what we can do there now that we've completed the gold mine. And until next time, let it gear to you. Oh yeah!